I just want to say, don't miss out on this vintage sleeper. This is a bolo that you may not know about. All right, bolo buddies, I have a feeling that this bolo is going to knock your socks off. Um, I can't remember where I got it, but it is in Craft Tote 3, and most of those items came from an estate sale, so I'm going to assume that they came from the estate sale, but I just, I don't know. So let's go get it. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. Time reseller. $600 for a My Little Pony. Amazing, right? All right, let's get started. So I did have this item priced kind of high. Um, I was hoping to get a little more, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to take your $40 plus shipping. Wait until you see what it is. All right, it's hiding right there in that Ziploc bag. Anybody have any guesses? It's in the craft tote, but it's not really a craft. So I'm gonna pull it out of here and I'm gonna show you guys what it is. You ready for this? Trapper keepers. Not the trapper keeper, but the folders from the trapper keepers. Three of them here. Three of them. I sold these for $40 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for $51.68. Who remembers the Trapper Keeper folders that had all of the little cheat sheets over here on the side? I remember these. These are from the 90s, made in the USA. And how cool is that? So I sold three trapper keeper folders i think they are all the same on the inside you can see here made in the usa and folders can definitely oh look at this one it's nice and white and bright i love it trapper keepers can definitely themselves can be a bolo but you can also sell the folders for big for big money so 40 dollars plus shipping on these and i want you to let me know do you think i did good or bad. Let's get started. Okay, so you just saw what I sold and what I sold it for. Now I'm going to show you some other solds that other people sold. That's a lot of solds. Okay, so the first item here are these Trapper Keepers, and it is a set of four, kind of like what I sold. These look to be in really nice condition, and they sold them for $24.99 plus shipping. The next item, this person sold 11 of them for $39.99 plus shipping. So I guess for me, I knew this item had value and I was willing to wait on the right buyer. So I sold four for the same price that this person sold 11. And maybe colors have something to do with it. I'm not really sure. Or maybe this person was just looking to move it quick. Um, I had mine originally listed at $65. They were on sale for $65. Actually, I only had three, didn't I? I only had three. So um, originally six on sale for 65 and I took a best offer of 40. So I guess it's, do you want to sell the item quickly or do you want to sell the item, wait a little bit longer and make a little more? So for me, these actually sold pretty quickly. Um, I didn't have a lot of money in them. They did not take up a lot of space. So I listed them high and waited for the right buyer. Now, is that the best approach? I'm not saying that's the best approach. That's just how I do things sometimes. Um, but I typically take best offers on almost every single item I sell. The next one is this set of six. Now these do say new, which I would be really hesitant to use the word new on something that is vintage without the original packaging. I do see that it has the sticker on it, um, but uh, I don't know. I would probably put pre-owned on this if it were me, because if there is any like imperfection to these folders that could end up being a um, item not as described. That's just my opinion. You guys let me know what you would do in the comments. So this sold um, six of these for $49.99 plus shipping. 
The next item is my set. And I sold three of them with a best offer of $40. I just want to show you guys my pictures. I do use photo room to white out my background. You can see the scratches and the scuffs. My items are used. They are pre-owned. I put pre-owned in the title. I opened them up. I showed both sides of every folder. I made sure that there were pictures. If there was an imperfection, I pointed it out in the photo. I showed that the corner had a little bit of edge wear, and that's what I do. Um, I make sure that I have clear pictures so that people know exactly what they are getting. And I sold these for $40 plus shipping. And let's see. Um, I listed this November 23rd. So uh, November, December, January, February, March, April. So they took about five months to sell, which to me, I am really happy with that. I figured they would take a lot longer to sell. I had them originally listed at $100 with a 35% off sale, put them at 65 and someone offered me 40 And I took it, plus shipping. The next item, let's talk about Trapper Keepers in general. Um, there's one brand, and we're going to talk about it, that is pretty much always a huge money bolo. But Trapper Keepers in general, they don't have to be that brand. This is just a horse trapper keeper, and it sold for $89.99 free shipping. And you can see it does have some of the original folders, but there is, um, it looks like it says bills paid on the inside. So the folders have been used. But for somebody who collects trapper keepers that likes horses, this is a home run. This is just a trapper keeper splat design, splatter design, whatever you want to call it. Sold for $99 plus shipping. Now, um, some of these I was not able to verify with feedback, but I did go into their store and make sure that they did not relist the item. Um, if they relisted the item, that would tell me that the it was not a good sale. Uh, I do the same thing with the tape measure. I think this is a great way to show your buyer exactly how big the item is. You can't dispute that. Um, if you just put the measurements down in the description, somebody can say anything they want. If it's in the photo, it's right there in the photo. And I like these um, harder, like contractor style uh, tape measures for the hard goods. Um, I do use a clothing tape measure typically for clothing, but sometimes I use one of these as well. This is a vintage Trapper Keeper. It's from Top Gun and it's from 1989 and it sold for $109.99. Again, condition is going to play a role in this. Do they have folders? Do they have any accessories inside of them? This one does not. And it still sold for $109.99. You can see right here, amazing seller. They got uh, feedback. Actually, it looks like they took a best offer of $96.79 on that. Um, but still almost a hundred dollars for a trapper keeper. And it was a good sale. This one right here is Lisa Frank. Okay. So Lisa Frank was the brand that I was telling you that is pretty much always a bolo. If you can find it from the nineties, one thing that I will tell you is Lisa Frank is being remade currently. So please be careful that you don't pick up a modern item thinking that it is vintage. Um, the big L and the big F used to be a good indicator that the item was vintage, but now they are bringing back the big L and the big F. So be careful. But if you use Google Lens, you will be able to find, you can see there's a little crack there. So the seller did a good job of showing that. Um, I don't know if they're doing um, reproductions of actual prints or if they're just bringing back Lisa Frank in general. And I don't know if they're bringing back Trapper Keepers, but just Lisa Frank in general, be careful with that. So this seal sold for $150 free shipping. And this also was a good sale. It says, love the extra stickers and little dolphin included. So they must have given them a little gift. So um, do you guys give gifts? I know that's very popular on uh, Poshmark to give gifts. I personally do not send gifts. I find in most cases when you send somebody a gift, like the gifts that I've received on Poshmark are typically things that I don't use or need. I mean, I am a reseller, but a lot of the items don't even have resale value. If they did have resale value, that would be cool because I would resell it. But I'm just not big on sending a 
gift in every package. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments what you guys do. A lot of you may sell on Poshmark, and I know a lot of people on Poshmark do that. This is a Stort Hall Gatano Vintage Trapper Keeper Notebook, New Wave Fashion 80s Pop Art. This is what it looks like. This sold for $155. It looks like it has some folders on the inside. So really just wanted to show you this one to show you that it doesn't have to be Lisa Frank. Now, I could have pulled up probably 50 different Lisa Frank trapper keepers that go for big money, but that would be kind of boring. So just know that if it's Lisa Frank, look it up. But there are other trapper keepers that go for a lot of money as well. This is a Trapper Keeper Lamborghini from the 80s, sold for $149.99. And it's even got some damage on it. I mean, these are old Trapper Keepers. It has a Transformers Dinobot uh, folder on the inside, which is kind of fun. Um, and they included that in the title. Did that help this sell? Maybe. Maybe somebody collects Transformers and Lamborghinis. $149.99 plus shipping. Here is another one, another Lamborghini. This one sold for $149.99 and it just has the original Trapper Keeper portfolio folders and the pad of paper. And I don't know what this is. So um, $149.95 plus shipping on that one. Here is another Lisa Frank. This one is a holographic um, print or I don't know what you call it. Uh, but it's really cool. Anything holographic that's Lisa Frank is going to go probably for more money. This sold for $275 and the buyer paid shipping. It does have some condition issues. Does not matter. Would it have sold for more without the condition issues? Maybe. All right, let's go over to, po uh, I'm sorry, Mercari. Uh, I keep telling you guys that Mercari is not a garage sale app. You can sell items on Mercari for big money. Um, specifically, Plush can do really, really well over on Mercari. Uh, check out my Build-A-Bear video that I did. Um, a lot of Build-A-Bear sell for more on Mercari than they do eBay. eBay sometimes gets flooded with items and your item sells quicker and for more money on Mercari. If you're not selling on Mercari in Poshmark, definitely consider it. Um, I've talked to you guys about it before. I use List Perfectly. I start my items on eBay and then I cross post with List Perfectly to Mercari and Poshmark. If you want to learn more about that, there is a video, a demo video down in the description. You can click on that. I walk you through exactly how to use List Perfectly. Um, I'm one of those where I want to see how it's done and see if it's right for me. Um, if you decide you want to try it, you can get 30% off your first month with coupon referral code BOLO Buddies, all one word, and that's 30% off of the list perfectly. Now, if you want to join Mercari, I have a link for that also. And if you use my link, you're going to get $10 to shop. You're also going to get another $20 to shop when you sell $100 worth of stuff. So, and then when you guys do that, I also get money to shop. So definitely use my link. I really appreciate it. And I know there have been a lot of you that have used my link. Get those items listed. I'm telling you, if you list, you're going to sell some stuff. So uh, this is a 1990s vintage Lisa Frank zipper binder trapper keeper. And it sold on Mercari for $152. So a little bit different, but $152 on Mercari. Here is another um, Lisa Frank. I don't know it, what this would be called, this glitter effect. Um, I, it's not holographic, but this one has some of the little uh, things inside of it right here. So this sold for $150. The next item are these Lisa Frank Aliens Zoomer and Zorbit Mini Binder. So this is just a little guy and it sold for $144. And it's got the stamps with it. The aliens seem to do pretty good. So keep your eye out for those. This is just a 1980s rock trapper keeper. And it sold for $76 plus shipping. Just wanted to show you this one. This one is not Lisa Frank. It does have a folder inside of it. So these trapper keepers, you can find them at garage sales and thrift stores, estate sales. So keep your eyes open for them, even if they're not Lisa Frank. Look at this. Some of them can still do really well. Here's a Jurassic Park from 1992, and it's got some of the folders inside of it. Sold for 75 plus shipping. And this is just an old school vintage Trapper Keeper, and it sold for $43. It also has the portfolio Trapper Keeper 
original folders inside of it, like the ones that I sold for $40. So this sold for $43 plus shipping. Now let's talk about Poshmark. Can you sell Trapper Keepers on Poshmark for big money? Yes, you can. And I do have a link for Poshmark down below. Also, if you use that, you get $10 to shop. And um, that's it for Poshmark, just a $10 credit to shop. But you know what? It is free money. So this one sold for $135. And here's another Lisa Frank. Now this is that same seal. They sold this for 80. And I think over on eBay, didn't it sell for 150? I'd have to go back and look, but I think it sold for 150 on eBay. So um, you, you really got to do your research. It could be a condition of the item. It could be just that the seller wanted to move the item quickly. The seller may not have known. Sometimes on Poshmark, um, it's just people selling stuff from their home. They're not really resellers, so they don't look things up like a reseller would. Who knows why she sold it for less? Um, maybe she got an offer for $80. I have no idea, but um, this sold for more on eBay. And here is just a Mead Trapper Keeper from the 90s. This one has the original Trapper Keeper, um, what do you call it, packaging on it. And it sold for $50. I'm going to tell you right now, if I would have had that listed, I would have listed it way, way higher. I mean, it is original with the original packaging. Look how cool that is. I mean, it's not super special, but it definitely has that like vintage 90s cool graphic design to it. So what would you guys have listed the Mead Trapper Keeper for from the 90s? And she may have it priced right on target at 50 bucks. Who knows? I'm just saying I would have priced it higher because I price things high. And the last one here is a vintage 1992 Mead Rainbow Hearts Trapper Keeper from, it doesn't say what year it is. Let's see. It's got that number on it, 1992. And she sold this for $46. So again, I probably would have priced it higher and just sat on it until the right person came around came along. It's really cool graphic. Um, and I think it probably could have sold for more. But again, I have not researched this. Let me know what you would have listed the trapper keeper for with the rainbow and the Trapper Keeper that was new old stock. Uh, curious to see what you guys would say. Um, some of you might say, hey, I'm gonna price it like they priced it. They sold it, they probably sold it quick. And some of you are gonna be like, I'm gonna be like you and price that high and wait for the right buyer. So we all have our own sales um, techniques. I don't know what you wanna call it. Ways we do things. Uh, again, I don't know if my way is right or wrong or what but it works for me it's the way i like to do it um do i accept a lot of best offers i sure do so um and a lot of my items sit for a long time so it depends uh if you want to sell things fast you are more competitive in your pricing and if you want to have long tail items and make more for your item um you can do that it's up to you let me know what kind of seller you are down in the comments thank you guys so much for being here thank you for watching there's going to be some videos popping up here and here and down below please be sure to subscribe if you're new here let me know how you found the channel and thanks for watching